Hey friends, how's it going? Ash here. Welcome back to Extra Gent Sense. Today is one of those days where I basically just grab something off the shelf, something out of the collection, and decide to sit down and shoot a quick video for you talking about it. Fragrance in question is Aqua de Parma's Quinodo de Liguria. How do you like that pronunciation? Quinodo de Liguria. Yeah, that's bad. So Aqua de Parma is a fragrance house that I've actually liked for a really, really long time. And one of the reasons is because from discounters, they are very affordable, which makes collecting them a little bit easier. And they do have great wearability, especially during spring and summertime. And where it's heading into spring right now, as I'm filming this video, figured it made a pretty good choice. This one in particular, you can find online for under $60 for a full presentation 150 ml size bottle, which is the size that I have right here because it's affordable. Am I ever gonna use this much? No. Are there smaller bottle sizes? Yes. But on some of those websites, on some of the discounters, a 2.5 ounce size bottle, half the size of this 175 mils, will run you like 53. So at that point, sure, I'll pay five more dollars and get twice the amount, even if I'm not gonna use it, because that's just too good of a deal to pass up. So in today's video, I will show you guys uh, the presentation, actually just the bottle, because the box is with like five million other boxes, I'm not gonna dig it out, but you can take a look at a picture and I'll break the fragrance down for you a little bit, let you know how it smells and whether or not you should check it out. So let's jump into it. So this one I will link in the description along with some of the other fragrances from this house that I like a lot. Again, a bunch of them are cheap. Now, not all of them, some of their higher end fragrances, they're a little bit pricier, but a whole bunch, a whole mess of fragrances from Aqua de Parma are on the cheap, at least from discounters. I think at retail, it's like 210 or something like that, but uh, 58 sounds better. Aqua de Parma, if you're watching this, I'm just playing. Retail is a good price for these guys. So uh, that was just a joke, Aqua de Parma doesn't even know who I am. All right, let's go ahead and check out the presentation. <laughs> okay, so here's the box, okay? I really should have one of those out. It's actually a, a little tube. Uh, that's how most Aqua de Parmas come. I actually like them. It's like their own little style. And here is the bottle. I think it looks nice. Very classy, but simple. And you have a little sticker on the front there with the name of the house, the name of the fragrance. The cap slides snugly into place, so you can really easily pick these up by the cap, no problem. On the bottom, you have your sticker, which has your badge code, and also your uh, concentration on there. Actually, mine I bought as a tester, I just realized. <laughs> That's how long I've had this stuff. I didn't even remember that I bought this one as a tester, but yeah, this is a tester. My badge code is 2390X, and this is an EDT Eau de Toilette concentration. Let's go ahead and share a couple sprays, guys, so you can check out the atomizer in action. Here we go. Real solid. Now, as I said, a lot of Aqua de Parma fragrances, until you start going into some of their higher end ones, you know, that are based around leather and oud and stuff like that, until you start going into those, most Aqua de Parma fragrances are better suited for spring and summertime. Most of them are very classy gentlemanly, easy to wear. This line in particular has a lot of great scents for summer that are based around citrus. Fico di Amalfi is probably the most well known from this line. It's based around fig primarily, but a lot of the others based around citrus. Now you can tell this one based around Kinoto because it's in the name. When you first spray this fragrance on, I think it smells awesome. I love the opening. It does have a little bit of like that throwback Italian cologne citrusy kind of style where it's it's zesty, it's zingy, it's fizzy almost, a little green as well. It's gonna remind you a little bit vaguely of something like Dior's Eau Sauvage Eau de Toilette, only this does not smell as old school. Some people might say dated as Eau Sauvage Eau de Toilette. Eau Sauvage is a little bit sharper with the citrus 
It's a little bit more aggressive. This one, as I said, is more fizzy. It's almost like an Italian soda or something like that. You know, it's got that effervescence to it, that bubbly sparkliness, but it also does have kind of an herbal aromatic green tinge to it mixing together with that citrus off the top. And again, I think it smells awesome. I think it's the type of fragrance that you could easily wear in spring or summer during the day to the office or even more formal situations potentially, but then it also has great use as a casual fragrance, as just an everyday wear kind of scent. Now, it may not appeal as much to younger guys as some of the other fragrances in this lineup, but I think that it's not the type of scent that's so classy, sophisticated, whatever you wanna call it, that it's unwearable by younger guys. I think that as long as you have an appreciation for a little bit of that herbal tinge, that aromatic tinge, that you can rock this pretty easily. So yeah, the opening, again, love it, love it. And uh, to be fair, that's really the strong suit for most of the fragrances in this line, is their openings. Because some of those fragrances have openings that I think are just absolutely killer. Just killer. Rancia de Capri, that one is my favorite. I think that is one of my most beloved <laughs> orange citrus type openings. Really, really great. So yeah, this one opening top notch. As it dries down, uh, that citrus, that feel, that Kinoto fades away a bit, and then you start to get more of the herbal facets coming out. You get rosemary that comes through pretty clearly in the mid. You've got some light florals that come out there, kind of along the edges. You know, it doesn't become a floral scent per se, but you've got a little tinge, some clean florals that come out, uh, geranium, jasmine specifically. And that Kinoto, you know, it does linger a little bit in the sense that that green facet of the citrus smell from the opening, it lingers into the mid. But the true citrusy part of it, like there's mandarin orange in there as well, that unfortunately fades pretty quickly, but that's what you would expect. Into the dry down, a clean musk. Uh, that is one thing with these fragrances that it may appeal to you, but it may not. A lot of times their dry downs are safe and a little bit basic. So the opening is really gonna rope you in. And it's that type of fragrance, a lot of these anyway, where you just wanna spray them on and smell it. And then once that opening goes away, you wanna spray it on again. And frankly, with how cheap they are and how big the bottles are, you can afford to do that if you wanted. But as they head through the mid into the dry down, they do take on this kind of safer spot where they're competently done, they're wearable, they smell nice smell clean, still classy, but maybe they're lacking a little bit of that je ne sais quoi that will take the fragrance to the next level, something that will make it more unique, that will make it stand out more uh, in the dry down. Sometimes there's a little bit left to be wanting. And that to me is really the only drawback for this one is that once it transitions into the dry down, or once you get out of the mid into the dry down and, and some of those aromatics have faded away, at that point, there's not too much there that's gonna have a wow factor. You know, people will smell it, they'll think it smells good, think it smells fine, but it doesn't really have that wow factor once you get into the dry down. But it still is an easy wear, it still smells nice, and it's not anything where you're gonna smell this one in the dry down and think, ooh, you know, what is that? No, it's still, it's still good. It's just the bar is set very high at the opening, and you know, as it goes down into the dry down, it's not quite as nice as it was, so you know, it's just one of those deals where you wish that they were more on the same playing field uh, as each other in terms of how attention grabbing they are. Still though, great smelling fragrance. The quality versus the price that you pay, fantastic. I mean, you can't beat that. 150 mils for under 60 bucks for a niche fragrance. Yeah, that is a sick deal. Now in terms of performance, not great. Again, it's the type of scent that you can just load yourself down with because it's not super pricey. So you can kind of give it a pass to an extent. Longevity is a little bit below average on my skin. Projection is good initially, like very nice initially actually. But as you head out of the mid, it does sit pretty close to my skin. So on the whole, I would say that the performance a little bit below average. And this line is technically unisex, 
so it's made for both ladies and guys, but this fragrance in particular does lean a little bit more masculine. And again, that is going to be partially because you can tie the way this one smells into some of the classic men's fragrances from yesteryear, obviously with a little bit of a modern twist, but because of that similarity, it does lean more masculine. I think a lot of ladies would smell this and maybe not go for it. In terms of seasons, spring and summer, <laughs> just straight up spring and summer. And not the type of fragrance that's gonna match as well during fall or winter. But I mean, if you wanna wear it during fall or winter, go for it, knock yourself out. You'll be smelling pretty unique. I'll tell you that much, not too many people are gonna be wearing this. And as far as daytime or nighttime use, daytime. This is very much more of a daytime fragrance. As I said though, good versatility. This is a potential office fragrance, a good casual fragrance. You could even dress it up a little bit because of that kind of classic masculine style that it has. I just think it's a, a perfect classy scent that has a throwback feel during spring or summer. Can't go wrong with this stuff. And that price point under 60 bucks, just awesome. I own pretty much every fragrance in this line. So I may cover some more of the other ones. They're actually right up there uh, later on on this channel. This is not my favorite from the line, but it's a very solid one. So there we go, a little uh, fresh scent. Gonna have you smelling super classy for this spring and summer. That is also a great buy at the price. Do not pay retail for it. Uh, don't do that, no. With how much you can save on that, that would be a travesty. All right, guys, I'm gonna head out of here. If you've smelled fragrances from this line, let me know which ones are your absolute favorites. Which ones do you love the most? Thank you for hanging with me. Stay safe out there. I'll see you again another day with another video. See you guys later.